uh, Senator Kerry is what I guess I would call a great American. Uh, he uh, risked his life during the Vietnam War. Uh, he was a uh, decorated veteran uh, that's probably well known some of you read his books. Uh, he came back here and became a public servant, first as governor of Nebraska. Later he ran for Senate. Uh, he served two uh, periods there. So please join me in welcoming him. Particularly if you're tackling an issue like climate change, I don't think there's a low-cost way out of this. You either believe the science, and I do, uh, that what we as human beings are doing are uh, is, is raising the level of, of carbon dioxide in the air, and that rising level uh, is going to increase the temperature upon this earth with profound implications for life on this planet, not for you and I in this room, uh, perhaps not in the next 10 years, but every reliable scientific evaluation shows that the three and a half or four million Americans that are born this year uh, will face profound uh, and in some cases terrible changes unless we change what we're doing. And you either believe it or you don't. And if you act uh, based upon that, I don't uh, by the argument that there's a low-cost way out of this. We're going to have to do things differently. And to be asked to be do, do, do things differently uh, uh, is not the easiest thing for a political leader to propose uh, to us. So I thank you all. I'll be prepared to accept the dinner round of applause and answer any questions. <laughs> I'm interested in this idea of uh, the, the ethical dimension or psych psychological dimension of geography that you brought up and this question of where am I. And I guess it could be said that in, in the digital domain, if you take something like the phenomenon of Twitter seriously, then maybe the question should be, what am I doing? And in terms of uh, brevity, you really exceeded the 160 character limit of your speech there. <laughs> but my, my question has to do with with, you, you brought up the idea of, of your service in Vietnam and how you give thanks to your, to your government for taking care of you after that. Mm -hmm. But the other side of that, the shadow side of that, the psychological dimension to that, what you stated, what you, what you didn't state, was the, the geography of, of threat or the geography of fear. And that if your government had not sent you to both kill and potentially be killed and be wounded, in that war, then that would not have happened. And there seems to be a tendency in this country to always dislocate our fear or the threat on the other side of the world. And just one example of this is the war in Vietnam, is that you know, President Kennedy was in, uh, from historical documents, was in the midst of de-escalating the, the war in Vietnam, was in the midst of putting the hands of, uh, you know, of the powers of the uh, printing money away from the Federal Reserve in the hands of the Treasury, and then someone stood down a Secret Service contingent, and it wasn't the Northern Vietnamese. So wh what do we need to do as American people in terms of reintegrating uh, this geography of, of, of threat? You know, I mean, Al-Qaeda, most American people know that Al-Qaeda didn't destroy Main Street. Wall Street, D.C. are the ones who seem to have destroyed Main Street. And even just last, I guess, you know, this 9-11 commission that you participated in, there's now multitudes of scientists, architects, and engineers who say that there's overwhelming evidence that those buildings were blown up with high-tech explosives that, of course, Al-Qaeda couldn't have used. So where, where what well, is the geography for order, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's the levity part. The audience has got to have levity. Uh, well, I, I mean, I disagree. I do not think there's a, there, there's a body of scientific evidence that indicates those buildings were blown up. I, I was there that morning. I saw two planes fly into them. How about Building 7? You saw that come straight down. That building is full of... Uh, uh, you know, is it full of fuel? No, I was, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, that question has been examined, the 11 Commission, lots of independent people have examined it. Believe me, in New York City, that thing had been blown up. Uh, people in New York City would know it, they'd be angry about it. The firefighters right. do know, and they're being suppressed by former CIA Director John Deutsch. 
John Deutsch was not, he can't, a former CIA, first of all, a current CIA director would have trouble suppressing free speech, but certainly John Deutsch is now a member of the faculty of MIT, doesn't have much reach on firefighters. Hell, the, the mayor hasn't got much reach over the firefighters <laughs> in New York City, so. Um, no, I think the earlier questions, are, it's, it, you know, it, it, all I'm, all I'm trying to say is that when you're, when you're trying to make a decision, it, it matters to answer some fundamental questions about who you are. And to me, geography is a lot more than place, and it it's, comes down to a simple question. That each of us as individuals, and that all of us uh, as a group, uh, have to answer before we, or should attempt to answer before we make a decision. The question is, where am I? Well, where am I obviously has a physical talk about that. We're not just here physically, we're here in 2009. Uh, and that's a different place in 1914 or 1814 or any other period of time. There's a metaphysical dimension to where am I. Because where am I uh, leads to how did I get here and where am I going. And each of us has to and should, in my strong opinion, attempt to answer that question. Um, in my own case, to the Vietnam experience, there was some bad experiences uh, uh, there for me. Uh, but, uh, you know, they've been completely overwhelmed by generosity upon me. I, I, I didn't want to check anybody in 1969. That was altogether unpleasant to be around in 1969. So, you know, I, I just get up every morning and I'm grateful. And it makes it easier to get through the day. So, uh, anyway. I think this gentleman was next, but I'll take it afterwards. Uh, as a former soldier, I'll stand and speak to you. Um, can you help us, under, help us understand what went into your decision to leave the Senate? Why did I leave the Senate? Um, I mean, I, I ran for governor in 1982. As a Democrat, I, I had no political experience prior to that. If I had run in 80 or in 84, I would have lost. Uh, I ran into Paul Booker at a dinner not long. He was the chairman of the Federal Reserve in the, in the, in the late 1970s and early 80s. And I told him that, uh, that when he crushed inflation with high interest rates, he almost bankrupted me. Uh, you know, I was all, almost out of business as a consequence of that. On the other hand, he got me elected. So, uh, uh, you know, it mattered. Timing's a big deal. Uh, so, yes. Me? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Did you have Yeah. Okay. It, whatever, whatever works. Um, uh, since he brought it up, I was going to give this to you later, but I brought you the open bantham nano thermite. I thought you might be interested in that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that, yes, sir. Yeah, that's the paper that describes the advanced explosives that were found uh, and exploded. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's true. You should read the science before, before you critique it. Uh, you probably read the uh, Andrew Rifkin's Earth column in the New York Times. Do you read that? I do from time to time. Okay, well, today he had a column. Don't do that to me. I didn't read that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, today he had a column uh, of someone who was fearful that the. Uh, of people hyperbolizing the worst case scenarios for climate change. And then also on the fact that the Earth is gaining 75 million more people every year and we're headed toward 9 billion population. And what do you think are the consequences of that? Well, uh, uh, in, the, in the first instance, even if you lose, use the low estimates of uh, 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 the changes that are going to occur, the field pretty significant to me. Um, so I, I, I don't find, I'm, I, I'm not an alarmist. I'm not saying that uh, terrible things can happen. Oh, sorry. Well, sorry. Well, you know, one of the, when, you, when you grow up in Nebraska and your most important product is manufactured outside um, and you plant the spring and you uh, pray that for rain and then you pray that it doesn't rain too much and then you pray it doesn't hail and you pray it doesn't blow too much and you know, you begin to realize that there's a lot of things you don't control in life. Um, so I don't know if the scientists are right, uh, but when you're talking about the Earth, it seems doesn't seem like 
very good wager to be wagering against it. So um, I'm prepared to change the way I'm doing it. I just don't see any other smart uh, or good way of, of doing it. And as the population, I, I'm, I'm less worried than I used to be. You, you, there was a time when population was a, felt like a bigger issue to me than it is today. I do think it's, it's not insignificant, especially with the parent, I say this apparent because you may have better information than I, correlation between, inverse correlation between income and number of children that people have. It's an obvious, it's an obvious, can I ask my question, it's an obvious controlled demolition. How can you live with yourself when you have an eight-year-old son, how can you sleep at night, that you help with a whitewash about what happened in 9-11? Well, uh, uh, I'm not sure I do sleep well at night.